The first two episodes to the second season of Halo have come out, and shocking absolutely nobody, they suck ass. All the problems that the first season had remain, despite them trying to retcon all of the stupid shit they put into it. Here's a quick recap for those of you who didn't watch the first season and see how terrible it was. The Master Chief takes off his helmet in the very first episode, which he should never do, gets naked so that we can see his ass cheeks, cries to music because he's now experiencing emotions, and worst of all, he is so helpless, so pathetic, that in the last episode, he practically begs Cortana to kill him so that she can use his body as a meat puppet in order to beat the brutes. That's right, the Master Chief died in the last episode of Season 1 and is nothing more than a skin suit worn by Cortana. <sighs> Granted, they do retcon this almost immediately, probably because everyone who was still watching at this point was like, What the fuck was that? But this goes to show just how much the writers do not like Halo. I mean, they Luke Skywalkered the Master Chief in his own show. That's just sad. We also have the Covenant, whose entire goal is to exterminate the human race, take orders from a human girl boss who ends up getting piledrived by the Master Chief. Cortana, who in the games was just a normal AI, is now a clone made of Dr. Halsey that was brutally murdered and liquefied into goo before being drilled into the back of Master Chief's skull. And despite John not having any cameras or microphones coming out of his body, Cortana can somehow project herself outside of his head and be seen and spoken to by other people. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. There was also a subplot following an Asian girl sporting a terrible haircut and a very small ex-Spartan who's now a pirate, but it's so pointless and forgettable that it's barely worth mentioning. I only do it because both characters are still in the show. So what's different with season 2? Well, nothing really. The Master Chief and the Spartans keep getting out of their suits. They keep being emotional despite being super soldiers. The UNSC continues to be evil pieces of shit, and the Covenant still obey a human girl boss, despite wanting to genocide all of humanity. Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. The only thing I can see that's different is that the budget has clearly shrunk. We no longer have these big open areas with clear visuals and lots of extras, but confined, poorly lit, cheap sets that they keep reusing. The CGI is appalling. Every action scene looks fake as none of the humans move in a realistic manner. They run like Forrest Gump with fucked up legs. Every fight scene is set in a badly lit area, all so that they can hide the terrible CGI. The colour scheme is dark and muted, which makes it a chore to watch. Couple this together with the bad lighting, and it becomes very hard to see what the fuck you're supposed to be looking at. Outside of how ugly things look, we have the whole war with the Covenant, which should feel like a desperate fight for survival against an unstoppable and technologically superior force, feel almost inconsequential. They feel like a generic secondary threat that do almost nothing. Yes, they blow up a remote tiny village in the middle of nowhere that nobody gives a fuck about, but who cares, these people are insignificant. In fact, it feels like the main government, the UNSC, are the main villains of Halo, which is not only less interesting than the religious aliens that have to kill humanity because they undermine their beliefs, but if humanity is filled with evil cocksuckers, then why should any of us care that the Covenant is trying to kill them? The humans should be the underdogs of this story, and yet I want the aliens to win, as they seem less evil. I also wanted to mention that Cortana looks different, even though it's the same actress. Yes, she's more blue, but her face looks weird. Apparently, this was a choice done by the new showrunner, when his priority should have been on the script. What a fucking waste of time. Paramount must know that they have a tear in their hands, so they've probably decided to do what they did with Star Trek, which is to call the show a success despite nobody watching it, whilst they keep downsizing the show and cutting the budget. Paramount's Halo is so fucking boring, you'd think that after having both showrunners leave because they were that shit at their jobs, there would be some improvement from the new guy. Right? Wrong. He seems to understand Halo about as well as the last two showrunners did. Anyway, let's not waste any more time in this than we have to, and run through the boring plot. Episode 1 begins with a shot of Master Chief on a slab because he's suffering from a small illness, otherwise known as brain death, before cutting away to another planet sometime in the future, and he's all fine now, because in the future, I guess it's like the common cold, take two tablets and you're fine. That's so fucking lazy. He's also no longer connected to Katana, as they have removed her from his skull, despite her being nothing more than blue liquid. 
how they managed this. Did they open his head up like a coconut? I don't know. And the writers clearly aren't interested in explaining their own work. Wow, that's really lazy. So after that lazy piece of reckoning, we see them trying to evacuate a bunch of civilians that don't want to leave because the UNSC are twats, but end up changing their minds when the Covenant attack. And despite this being a tense action scene, it's immediately undercut by having the Spartans gossiping to one another about what they watched on TV last night. I watch programs sometimes. Programs? Like, about animals and stuff. Oh. What the fuck am I watching? The Master Chief ends up having a barely visible shaky cam fight with a bunch of elites who surround him and yet don't kill him, probably because he clapped the cheeks of their girl boss leader last season and she still wants some of that master dick. Finally, the place gets blown up by slow-moving blue lasers as they escape, and what does Master Chief do? Well, he takes off his helmet, because the writers have learnt nothing. No one wants to see John's face. He's a mystery, that's the whole point of his character, yet they keep doing it. Afterwards, we continue to see the UNSC be evil, as they cover up the attacks on humanity and lie about the massive amount of civilian casualties, not for morale, but because they don't want to acknowledge what is happening. That's fucking stupid. At this point, it feels like the humans are trying to kill themselves. Why is nobody taking this war seriously? Anyway, John, the seven foot tall Spartan, shows us that he is not only a master chief, but also a master of disguise, as he manages to sneak out of his military base with no one noticing. And how he does this is by wearing a small black hood that doesn't even cover up his face. <sighs> That's right, not a single person noticed this giant seven foot tall Spartan wearing nothing more than a hoodie leave his barracks. Christ, who wrote this? He ends up meeting the annoying admiral from last season. She warns him that the white guy with a British accent might just be evil. Oh my god! After that mind blowing revelation, John visits a hologram bar where he tries to cope with his Queen Cortana having left him. You are a sad, strange little man. The B story involves the very small ex-Spartan, now termed Pirate King, trying to find Dr. Horsley, but ends up getting captured by the UNSC in one of the most obvious traps I've seen. Apparently, Dr. Horsley is in a cryogenic container on a derelict ship that has been blown in half, and the only person who knows anything about this is some guy that sounds like Sam from Lord of the Rings. Times being what they are, sir, I suppose the right to live free among you fine folk. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frugal. The ones that really mattered. What's funny is that when the Pirate King figures out it's a trap, a bunch of dudes who are just waiting in the dark suddenly step forward. Just think about it, they had to have been standing in the dark for hours, maybe even for tens of hours for him to arrive, then board the ship before figuring out it was a plan, all so that they could make a big dramatic entrance. That's gay. So his crew betrays him and abandons him, and that was episode one. That was shit! Episode 2 somehow manages to be the same as episode 1 and yet feel worse. This has four storylines which makes it feel longer, and that's probably why. The first is the Asian woman who used to have a bad haircut but no longer, gets chased around by a bunch of baddies, and that's it. She kills some rando before running away. Who gives a shit? The second is the ex very small black Spartan now turned Pirate King's wife who is now in charge and she begins to suspect that he was betrayed because his crew give dog shit answers to her suspicions and that's it nothing else happens. The third is Dr. Halsley continuing to experiment on more children as she is now forced to work for Anderson, the white man with a British accent who is also keeping Cortana hostage, may possibly be evil. No way! No way! And the fourth has John repeatedly telling Anderson that the Covenant are up to something, but keeps getting told to fuck off. However, in one of the conversations, Anderson says this to him. I need Master Chief. We all do. But John... At the end of the day, he's just a guy in a suit. Now, I suspect what he really means by this is that at some point, either Cortana or another AI take over the Master Chief's armor and have them replace John. I hope this isn't true, because that sounds as shit as it is predictable. But this is Paramount we are talking about. Predictable shit is their bread and butter. So John once again sneaks out of his military base, this time without a hoodie, and no one notices that this giant has gone missing. Even when Anderson is beginning to become deeply suspicious of him, and asking his crewmates all about him. 
He goes on to meet the soldier whose life he saved in episode 1, and she doesn't remember much of what has happened, so he decides to go AWOL and follow after another Spartan team on an unauthorised mission. He just reroutes his ship alongside his team and flies to another planet, and no one in the military tries to stop him. I don't even know if they've been alerted that one of their ships has gone missing. It wouldn't surprise me because the military in Halo is shit. This is a major problem I have with the show. Nobody acts like they are in a real army. Yes, I know the army nowadays is a fucking joke, but this is supposed to be a proper, well-disciplined military. And yet, everybody here acts like orders don't mean anything, and that you can take expensive military equipment out for a joyride with no consequences. Other than that, we have his teammates. One of them is crying over stress, the blonde bitch is concerned about John, and the black dude likes to watch Animal Planet. These people don't feel like super soldiers, they suck ass. Anyway, the final scene is on Reach, with eight soldiers looking down a pitch black corridor, and instead of waiting to open fire, four men just walk down the hallway and die. Having just seen half their men die, these geniuses think that it's a good idea to send yet another four men to walk down the hallway, and what do you know, they get slaughtered. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? One guy is left behind on his own, all so that he can die dramatically, and also so that the artist could CGI the elite as little as possible in order to save money. The girl boss the Master Chief fucked last season is now in charge of the Covenant, despite being a human, and the episode ends with her grabbing the MacGuffin from last season. I don't give a fuck. Season 2 of Halo continues to be shit, and that's because it's not Halo. It's a boring as fuck, miserable sci-fi show, with weak characters, stupid writing, no stakes, bad CGI, and nothing to get invested in. This season is going to be as shit as the last one, because no one at Paramount gives a fuck about the source material, and are only using the brand as a skin suit in order to push the boring show they wanted to make under the Halo umbrella. Anyway, that was episode 1 and 2 of a show that pretends to be Halo. It's a piece of shit.